statement sent a couple of hours later read, Iran had, past tense, such a program. The White House claims that was a, quote, clerical error. Joining us now is the man who negotiated key parts of the Iran nuclear deal, former energy secretary under President Obama, Ernest Moniz. Secretary Moniz, thank you very much for being here. What did you think when you read that first statement in the present tense that Iran has a robust nuclear program? Well, the immediate reaction was this is blatantly incorrect. Uh, now, I'm not going to talk about motivation. Uh, it was, as you said, uh, Allison corrected later on, but uh, that statement did, uh, shall we say, muddy the waters, and uh, as I say, was simply a, a blatantly incorrect statement. Do you have any idea how that went over in Iran? Uh, no, I don't, uh, but I think if, uh, if in Iran, uh, there was probably uh, less concern uh, about that uh, uh, slip uh, than there was about the fact that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu's uh, uh, presentation uh, obviously uh, raised questions uh, that they are going to have to answer. Now, uh, let me make it very clear, the, uh, it did not reveal anything new at a high level. That is, we've always said, and we knew quite well, that uh, Iran had a structured nuclear weapons program until 2003. Uh, the revelations uh, uh, now uh, reaffirm that. Uh, frankly, uh, they re reaffirms our intelligence community's uh, conclusion that that program, that structured program, ended around 2003, uh, 2004. But is uh, that what it does? I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, uh, Mr. Secretary, but when we had Benjamin Netanyahu on our air yesterday, what he basically said was that Israeli intelligence has found that Iran is not complying, they're cheating on the deal because they have kept these atomic records squirreled away in a secret compound. So what's your response to that? Well, look, the, the, the agreement is about verifiably guaranteeing that Iran does not have a nuclear weapons program. Uh, this, this, the, I think this information, as I understand it, will reveal more details about the old program, but uh, everyone is in agreement that they are complying uh, with the nuclear restrictions uh, in this agreement. But were they supposed to keep all of their records in a secret compound? You know, the, uh, uh, the agreement does not explicitly address that, but I do have to say uh, it's very hard for them to square this with their statements that they never had a nuclear weapons program. We always said that's incorrect. That's why the agreement uh, is not based upon trust and is extremely detailed. Uh, and secondly, it's certainly inconsistent uh, with the Supreme Leader's statement that they will never have a nuclear program. Why do they keep these materials? So I think the IAEA, the international inspectors, are going to have to drill into this and understand not just what's in the agreement, uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the information uh, that's being uh, prov provided to them, but who knew it? Where are those people today? Are yeah. they still in, in the program? So I think Iran is really on the spot. Uh, the revelations, in my view, uh, reinforce the importance of maintaining the agreement, maintaining the process now mm -hmm. that is really going to uh, put Iran on, uh, on the spot. Uh, they were they, it just reinforces what we always said. We knew they had a program. They lied about it. And as Secretary yeah. Mattis said, uh, this agreement is written for someone who cheats. But doesn't it also reinforce what President Trump has been saying, which is, this is a lousy deal. We got the raw end of the deal, and Iran is basically not in compliance. Here, let me just play for you the things, the laundry list of things that President Trump has been saying over and over about the deal that you helped negotiate. Listen to this. I don't think Iran is in compliance. President Obama, in his wisdom, gave them $150 billion. He gave them $1.8 billion in cash. As I have said many times, the Iran deal was one of the worst and most one-sided transactions the United States has ever entered into. You look at the ballistic missiles that they're going and testing. Uh, what kind of a deal is it where you're allowed to test missiles all over the place? What do you say to all that criticism? Uh, that almost all of it is incorrect. Uh, uh, first of all, on the last point, uh, we all know that the agreement, uh, by design, uh, kept Iran from nuclear weapons uh, production. Uh, it, it, uh, the criticism that, is, that was leveled in 2015 and now on missiles, on Hezbollah, on human rights, etc., all very serious problems that we have to push back on, they are criticizing what the deal is not, not what the deal is. Secondly, 
the, uh, the deal does not have, uh, the word was not used in this clip, uh, the deal does not sunset. The most important part of the deal is the verification measures uh, that are very special, unique to Iran. They do not sunset. And let's face it, if Iran were to try to do a nuclear weapon program uh, again, it would not be at the sites that they have openly declared mm -hmm. to the international inspectors. It would be a covert program. That's the most important part of the agreement where the inspectors have the right to go anywhere uh, in a fixed time frame uh, to, uh, to look at suspicious sites. Uh, so the, the oh, and furthermore, by the way, on the funding, first of all, the $150 billion. Yeah, we remember uh, that was a the return of their, is, is, of is their seized not assets. not the right number. Yep. Uh, secondly, Ir Iran's complaints are that they have not reaped anything like the economic rewards huh. uh, they hoped for. And I think this revelation uh, of this week uh, uh, by uh, Mr. Netanyahu mm -hmm. uh, is clearly going to make companies even more reluctant yeah. to invest in Iran until this investigation runs its course, yeah. uh, and that will take a while. And so, Secretary Moniz, very quickly, what happens on May 12th, less than two weeks from now, if President Trump decides to pull out of this deal? Well, at this stage, uh, we've always said it would be a terrible mistake uh, to pull out for all kinds of reasons, including uh, including a wedge being driven uh, between us and our, especially our European allies. Uh, if he pulls out now, it will short circuit exactly the deep investigation uh, that uh, is put in place by the agreement. That is the process of providing this to the IAEA, having them investigate, go to the so-called joint commission of all the uh, negotiating partners uh, in the agreement, ultimately the UN Security Council. Frankly, Iran is now on the spot, and it would be foolish to let them off the hook, uh, especially in the context where, as I said, uh, the economic sanctions uh, uh, being waived uh, is still unlikely to, to open mm. up the spigot for any real investments until Iran clears up this, this, this whole set of yep. lies, uh, frankly, yep. what's happened to uh, the pieces of equipment that are in there, what's happened to the people who did this. This is going to take a while, and if Iran does not cooperate in that, they will either violate the agreement mm -hmm. uh, or, in fact, continue in the situation where the international community is not going to welcome uh, uh, investments in their, uh, in their economy. Thank you for your perspective and for all of your expertise. Secretary Thank you. Ernest Moniz, great to talk to you. Thank you. Chris. President Trump's former physician making an incredible claim, and that word may have significance on two levels. Did he have any direct input on Trump?